Okay, hello. We're, um, we have a panel today talking about uh, digital technologies for the physician's office. It's, it's actually a little more than that, but we'll, that's the title we're using. <laughs> we have um, Manny Krakas, Krakaris, sorry, the CEO of Augmetics, and Bill Korn, the CFO of CareCloud, um, who are going to start off by going through a brief presentation of their companies, and then we'll go through some questions. Um, I cover both of the stocks with a buy rating. Uh, and uh, if anybody has questions um, in the audience, there's a little box where you can type in your questions and we'll definitely try to get to them. So um, we'll try, let's, we'll start uh, alphabetically by company. So uh, Manny, would do you want to start and uh, tell us about your company? Sure, well, I'm not gonna go, thank you, Alan. I'm not gonna go through a formal presentation. I will uh, refer to investors to our website that has an investor presentation uh, there. Um, so just let me paint the, the big picture for, for people who are watching. The US healthcare industry is under severe duress today. Um, and the biggest culprit is the lack of staff to provide the care that is being demanded by a growing and aging patient population. People who are in the industry are being asked to do more with less. Uh, perfect example of this is the uh, nurses strike at Mount Sinai where the hospital organization just pushed too far and had staffing ratios uh, of uh, patients to staff to clinicians, uh, to nurses in particular, uh, that went from four to one to 19 to one. Uh, and that was just not sustainable. Um, and it's not just limited to Mount Sinai, this is endemic throughout the industry. And so what, what the industry has to figure out is how do we do more with the resources that we have, recognizing that the resources that we have are limited. We, they're, they're not an infinite supply. So we have to do more. And where Augmetics comes in is enabling the healthcare industry to do more with the resources that they do have by pulling out of their workflows those tasks that are not essential to providing care to the patient. And one of the big tasks, big burdens that clinicians face is the task of medical documentation. So imagine spending three hours a day with under a normal patient load doing documentation in addition to providing patient care. Well, when you go from a staffing ratio of four to one to 19 to one, that just magnifies the problem and it causes burnout. So try to remove that burden um, through allowing companies like Augmetics to assume the burden of medical documentation. Now, what we have done in particular that I think sets us apart from other companies that are in our sector is that we offer a variety of solutions to address the problem uh, because not all, not, not all requirements will uh, be conducive to one single solution. And then let me elaborate on that. Uh, the industry started, the legacy uh, solution to address this issue was dictation. Um, and solutions such as Dragon uh, were prevalent for a long time, but with the increasing complexity of the EHRs, their utility started to diminish because it was very difficult to dictate with precision and navigate verbally a, uh, uh, your medical note in the EHR. So the industry, uh, and we, we started this 10 years ago, transitioned to ambient-based solutions. And ambient-based solutions such as ours repurpose the conversation that naturally occurs between the doctor and the patient. So the doctor doesn't have to, or a clinician doesn't have to do any other step. They just go about having that interaction they would normally have with the patient. And we take that audio and video feed and use that as the primary input to generate the medical note. We use a lot of AI 
a lot of natural language processing, machine learning, et cetera, to automate as much of the node as possible. We also use people to make sure that the quality of that product when delivered to the doctor is the highest it can possibly be. Now, where we're different from the other players in our business is that the ambient class solution that we offer uh, is more than just one product. We offer a real-time synchronous solution. Uh, very few companies do that. It is very difficult to offer, to deliver. Uh, but we also offer an asynchronous solution as well. They address two very distinct price points in the industry. Um, and so we feel we're very well positioned from a market segmentation perspective to address those different price points through our product offering. We also offer other products at different price points uh, to address other pain points in the clinician workflow, such as pre-charting, for example, with our product called Aug Augmetics Prep. And then as we, Alan, as you know, we announced at the end of 2022, our plan to introduce a self-service model that harnesses the same <laughs> back end as our other products that in, in essence allows the doctor to complete the last mile of the medical note. And that will be offered at a much lower price point than all of our other products. So we offer the broadest suite of products in the industry to cater to different types of workflows, different work settings, different care settings, and different price points um, that, uh, that accommodates the biggest TAM that we can, we can get after. That, that's great. Th thank you so much. Uh, Bill? Sure. Thanks, Alan. And uh, you know, I agree with uh, with Manny that the uh, the whole healthcare industry is uh, is in a little bit of a uh, state of flux. And uh, you know, obviously that uh, when when we think about it, uh, you know, just like uh, our Vedix, uh, Care Cloud says, it, it's our goal to uh, to help the doctors and and help them focus on providing the best possible care to uh, to patients. Because at the end of the day, that's the objective here is uh, is improving patient care. And uh, you know, the world has actually changed pretty significantly, even in the last three years. And uh, you know, I'll give everybody a, a little bit of history, but uh, but focus more on uh, on where we are today. So uh, our company was started over twenty years ago. Our uh, our founder's wife was uh, is a physician. Uh, she was a customer number one, still uh, still a customer. And and you know, we started out. Uh, you know, as a, as a company focusing on what uh, what was, and I think still probably is one of the doctor's biggest problems, which is how do they get paid? And and at the end of the day, you could do all you want as a doctor, but if you don't get reimbursed from insurance, if you don't collect what you uh, what you need, it's hard to pay your uh, your people. It's hard to pay the uh, the rent, etc. So you know, we we started at the uh, at the core focusing on uh, on medical billing or revenue cycle management and. You know, today, as we've developed a whole suite of, of technology-based uh, solutions, including revenue cycle management as a part of that, we think it continues to be a, a core proposition for the, uh, for the customers. You know, but but you know, while that's necessary, we recognize it's not sufficient. So uh, years ago, uh, we developed, uh, I think it's probably 15 years or more since we developed our first uh, EHR. I think we're now on the fourth generation of a uh, VHR that's been uh, certified you know most most recently over the uh, the last few months under the uh, under the 2022 uh, certification uh, uh, regimen uh, we you know we include practice management so the, the software that's used to keep track of the uh, the visits and, and schedule them you know but but candidly the innovation that's occurred has not been around those core the the innovation over the last three years has really been uh, been sort of what we'll call digital health solutions. And uh, in, in 2019, we added telehealth to our uh, platform. And it's hard to think back to, uh, to, the, to the days before uh, COVID, but in 2019, most patients weren't really thinking about telehealth. Most doctors weren't really thinking about telehealth. Uh, and the, candidly, the payers certainly weren't thinking about reimbursing for, uh, for telehealth. Uh, you know, and everybody had a reason why this wouldn't necessarily work. Well, we got to uh, to March of, uh, of of 2020, COVID hit, 
And you know, we watched, uh, and I'll give a personal example. My wife is a physician, uh, was at a, a local hospital in New Jersey that used one of our competitors. Uh, when they told her and, and her uh, peers to, uh, to do telehealth visits, they said, pick up your iPhone and FaceTime with the, uh, with the patient, which of course meant that the patient could FaceTime with them at three o'clock in the morning if they wanted to. Uh, we had a little different uh, perspective. We told our doctors, telehealth is built into your platform. We already charge you a percent of what you collect. So there's no extra fee for using it. It's built into the patient portal. It's HIPAA compliant, it's secure, it's integrated with the EHR, and it's automatically integrated with our billing capability. So you can do telehealth visits tomorrow in a secure fashion. We can make sure that you get paid now that, uh, now that reimbursement has, uh, has caught up with that. And so that was really a boon for, uh, for our client base. And uh, you know, in, in, in 2020, we went through a little bit of a, uh, of, of a metamorphosis uh, we did our two biggest acquisitions in uh, in 2020. We started the year uh, called Medical Transcription Billing Corporation. Again, based on our uh, on our roots, we bought a company named CareCloud, and, and we eventually concluded that was a good name. So we took that name and and just recently switched our uh, our ticker to uh, uh, from MTBC to uh, to CCLD. Uh, but that really sort of uh, symbolized the metamorphosis to these technology enabled uh, solutions. Uh, as the world has progressed, you know, one of the things that's happened, uh, and it's happened a lot over the last 12 months that, that I think would never have happened without COVID, has been that the, you know, the whole notion of value-based care has, has gotten you know, wind in the sails from the fact that the, uh, the payer <laughs> now realize you could do things a little bit differently and it still works. And, and they saw the example of telemedicine. Uh, and, and so last year, the, uh, one, one of the uh, changes in the industry uh, was around chronic care management. And again, for years, there'd been discussion of, gee, if you've got chronic conditions, somebody should be following up with you to keep you out of the ER. But in fact, everyone said you should do that, but there really wasn't money where their mouth was. Well, you know, in, in 2022, Medicare loosened some of the rules, increased some of the reimbursement and said, you know, it's great if, the, if, if it's done by a physician, it's fine if it's done by a, uh, an RN. By the way, it can be done by a care manager who isn't even an RN as long as they're doing it under the supervision of the uh, of the doctor. And, and the goal of these chronic care visits is let's have an interaction with the patient every month, make sure they're doing okay, everything's fine. Bill, let's see you again in uh, in four weeks. Uh, you know, oh, maybe you got a problem with some of your numbers. Maybe you know, maybe it's your blood sugar, maybe it's your blood pressure, whatever. The okay, in your situation, we actually need to set you up with the uh, with the doctor. And by doing that, we're going to keep you safe, keep you out of the, uh, out of the ER. So we've uh, introduced uh, CareCloud Wellness, which, uh, which is an offering that includes chronic care management and, and started to roll this out with our, uh, with our clients. And when they've got patients who've got uh, chronic conditions, we've got the care managers who can do it, either ourselves or we've got a third party that we're working with. So the doctor's office doesn't need to hire people to do this. And again, if you ask them to, uh, to hire more people, They'd say, as Manny said, I, I I can't keep up with the work that I have right now. The last thing I want to do is add more uh, more people. But we can do that. Uh, we can uh, we can run these uh, these visits. We can charge the uh, the insurance, and we can share some of the fees back with the uh, with the doctor. So it's a win for the doctor. It's a win for the patient because it keeps them uh, them healthy. And of course, it's a uh, it's a great new revenue stream for uh, for us. Uh, we've also started uh, offering what's called remote patient monitoring. So while chronic care includes a, a, a caregiver, the remote patient monitoring is totally automated. So we'll give you, for example, an automated blood pressure cuff uh, that gets reimbursed by, uh, by insurance, and we'll track your blood pressure and make sure that it's good. And again, if everything is fine, we don't need to tell anybody. It, you know, we, we just need to put the, the records into the EHR, whether it's our EHR or a third-party EHR. Uh, on the other hand, now we see a uh, we see something that uh, that doesn't look like it's in track. Now we know we need to go follow up. And you know, and, and to our mind, you know, the the introduction of these new capabilities uh, really is going to improve patient uh, well-being. It's going, to, uh, it's going to allow the doctors to really focus on outcomes, which at the end of the day is, is, is really what everybody is really uh, interested in. And, uh, and it provides us an opportunity as we, uh, as we continue to grow. So 
Yeah. Well, there's challenges. We think 2023 is probably one of the most exciting years uh, in the evolution of, uh, of the field of medicine that uh, that's occurred in a long time. Um, great, great overviews. Thank, thank you. Um, so I, I'd like both of you to provide um, your thoughts on how you improve the profitability of, of, a, of your customer, of a, of a practitioner's office. If, if you've in the past stated any um, anything that you can share of, uh, you know, the productivity improvements from what you offer, Maybe we'll, we can start with Manny. Sure. Uh, great question, Alan. So uh, with us, it's pretty obvious. Um, we save them time on documentation up to three hours a day. Uh, that translates into roughly a 20% improvement in productivity. Um, and that's because with the time savings they have, they can repurpose that time to see more patients. So that's the obvious benefit. But there's another one that's much more subtle. Uh, and that is the capture rate, uh, which, you know, <laughs> feeds right into Bill's model, which is that when we document the encounter that occurs between a physician and a patient, we capture everything that is reimbursable in that medical note, and it's coded. Um, when doctors do it themselves, they often forget some things that they have done because the, by the time they get around to documenting, it's at the end of the day after they've seen 20 or 30 or more patients. Sometimes it's not until the weekend. So by that time, they may have seen well over 100 patients. So for them to recall with precision what they covered during that, that encounter that is reimbursable gets missed. A lot of items get missed. So we have found, we've done very, uh, very extensive studies with some of our bigger customers that a significant part of the productivity improvement comes also from the ca higher capture rate of items that are reimbursable uh, or services that are reimbursable that are provided during the encounter. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I I would echo that, and and you know, one of the things that uh, that we do, uh, you know, one of our uh, core EHRs is called Talk EHR, and as the name implies. Gives the uh, gives the doctor the ability to uh, to dictate uh, into it uh, again, improving the uh, the capture. Uh, we offer coding. We offer credentialing. Uh, we, we all know coding. So you got uh, you got people who can who can uh, make sure that people are that the the doctors are using the right code. You don't want them overcoding, getting themselves in trouble, but you also don't want them undercoding and uh, and 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 leaving things on the table. We've got uh, we've got larger practices that are growing, and and I'll, and I'll think about practices that are adding new physicians or new or new uh, healthcare providers regularly. Uh, we offer credentialing, so we uh, we get those new providers immediately uh, set up with insurance so that they're uh, they're getting reimbursed. Uh, one of our large practices is in uh, in the physical therapy area, and we've recently uh, launched a uh, an offering for uh, for them uh, that we call Care Cloud Remote. Uh, because they they're actually doing the uh, the visits often in the patient's home, and so think about this almost as an Uber for the uh, for the therapist that's helping them plan out their day, figure out how do they get there, uh, how do they do this most uh, most effectively, and again integrating with the scheduling. So I'd say anything that you can do that can uh, can can kind of take the workload off the uh, the doctor and their staff, and handle the back office for them, let them focus on it. You know that's got to improve their uh, their profitability. Yeah, you know, and by the way, it's got to improve the uh, their ability to focus on the on the real needs of the patient. Thank you. Uh, both of your companies um, in the industries that you compete in, there's there's some very large competitors. Um, how, but talk about like how, how you compete and and how you win in in that type of environment. Uh, We'll, we'll switch to Manny again. Thanks. Okay. Um, okay. So our biggest competitor is Nuance, which is owned by Microsoft. So they're a formidable competitor, obviously. Uh, we can't compete with the level of resources that Microsoft can bring to bear uh, to uh, this particular uh, pain point in the industry. But what we do benefit from is our agility. Um, we, as I mentioned earlier, have the broadest 
product portfolio in the industry. Uh, Nuance has um, the their legacy product, which is their dictation tool called Dragon. And then about two years ago, they launched a, a, an asynchronous ambient solution called DAX. And DAX uh, competes against our asynchronous solution called Notes. But we have, again, other products like our live product, our Augmetics Prep product. And this year, uh, we'll be adding Augmetics Go, our self-serve product, to address, as I mentioned earlier, the different price points and segments within the industry. So we have fought several head-to-head -head battles uh, within the enterprise, uh, healthcare enterprises against Nuance. And I think we fared uh, pretty well. Uh, we've held our own more than, more than held our own. Um, we both have a significant share of large enterprises as customers. Um, and that's something that distinguishes us, um, Nuance and Augmetics, from uh, other competitors in the space who are focused mostly on independent physicians and small group practices. Getting into a large enterprise takes a great deal of time, effort, skill, resources uh, that you need to ensure that you satisfy the very stringent data security and compliance requirements of these big enterprises, um, as well as providing the scale that they need in order to accommodate the large number of physicians that they, uh, that they employ. Thank you. And I, our situation may be a little different because I look at it and say, there are a lot of big industry participants, but I don't actually look at them as, uh, as competitors. I look at them as, as, as potential partners. And yeah, well, we've got a, a very broad solution we also approach the uh, the business saying to a uh, to a customer, if you want to use the full suite, that's great. But if you're happy with an existing EHR, you don't need to change. We can still provide uh, value, and, and we have a lot of ways that we can do that. Whether it's providing the revenue cycle management, you know, adding these new care cloud wellness services, uh, you know, even things like our business intelligence so offering and robotic process automation. So we're happy to do that when, uh, when you're on a, uh, an, another platform. Uh, and, and one of our more recent offerings that, again, has, has really uh, evolved a lot over the last couple of years as, uh, as the workplace has been uh, more and more difficult for people to find staffing, uh, we have an offering we call Care Cloud Force, where we provide uh, people to, uh, to help. And, and we do this for hospitals. We do it for large practices. And we're actually now doing this for, uh, for others that that someone might call a competitor, but I'd say they're my customer too. And, uh, and, and we're giving them the, uh, the team uh, and many of those team members can be, uh, can be offshore. There could be some, uh, some onshore. I mean, we've got, uh, we got a lot of employees uh, offshore. Uh, you know, CareCloud has, uh, has been operating in, uh, in, in a global environment for, uh, for 20 years. And, uh, and we've got 3,000 employees in, uh, in Pakistan. So we, you know, we, could, we could do work and, and, and the cost is one-tenth of what it is here. So if somebody says, gee, I, you know, I really need 50, 100. In one case, I got somebody who says, I need 250 people to help me with revenue cycle management for myself and my clients. We're like, okay, we can start. We can start next month. And, you know, and it's nice to be in a position where we, where we can tap into great skilled labor around the world and focus them on the, uh, on the needs that people have uh, here in the, uh, in the U S and, uh, and do so in a way that's really a win for, uh, for everybody. Thank you. Um, you've both um, talked about some, some new offerings or potential offerings uh, with care cloud, the uh, remote uh, patient monitoring and, and chronic care management with um, bug medics expecting um a, a, a full lower, full autonomous uh, or, or a software driven solution. Talk a little about for, for these new offerings, how you think about them, maybe just in general, the impact that they could have on margins and total addressable market um, compared to kind of where you are today. Um, Manny? Sure. So um, we see the market falling into kind of three major price points. Um, in the upper tier <clears throat> price point, 
which is the synchronous ambient solution segment. Um, we figure there's probably no more than 100,000 doctors that, that are in that segment. Then there's the next, the middle tier, um, which where most of the asynchronous ambient solutions lie. And we figure that segment comprises about 300,000 physicians. And then finally, at the lower end of the price point, um, which today is dominated by uh, the dictation tools like Dragon, uh, we estimate the size of that market to be about 600,000 physicians. So we focused, we started at the premium end, you know, that, that segment that has maybe 100,000 doctors in it. And we've been migrating down. Um, as I mentioned earlier, delivering a synchronous real-time solution is probably the hardest thing to do in our business. Uh, as you migrate down the curve into the asynchronous solution sector, it becomes easier, uh, much easier. But as you migrate further down that curve, you also have the ability to employ more and more technology, automation technology. And the goal, of course, is to be able to generate a medical note without the need for any kind of human intervention other than repurposing the ambient conversation, the natural conversation that occurs between the doctor and the patient. So we decided to launch Go, Augmentics Go. We will do so this year. Uh, that is positioned in that lower price tier where we believe about 600,000 doctors reside. So much bigger TAM than the other ones that we're in. Um, with an ambient class solution, because right now that segment is addressed by dictation class solutions, which as I mentioned earlier, have lost their efficacy or much of their efficacy with the increasing complexity of the EHR, where they have to navigate through several drop down menus simply to make an entry into the appropriate field of the EHR when they're dictating something. So we want to go out there with an ambient class solution, which basically takes that natural interaction, uses the same back end we use for our notes product and our live product to generate a note automatically. It won't be perfect initially because automation technology in our field is not perfect yet. Everybody's working towards perfection, but it's going to take a long time to get there. Um, and so rather than have us complete the note by having a human finish it for them or clean it up for them. Augmentics Go is intended to allow the doctor to complete the last parts of that note, to do the quality assurance, if you will, of that note. And in return, they get a service at a fraction of the cost of a full service solution. So we believe that the time savings of Augmentics Go will be superior to that of the dictation tools that are prevalent in that segment of the market. And it will be priced competitively. That's really, and how do you, sorry, just one follow up on this. So how, how do you think about potential cannibalization between the different, as, as you roll out new things? Well, as long as there's a, a segment of the doctor population or physician population that doesn't want to touch the medical note. They don't want, they don't, they're so busy that they just don't have time to deal with it. There will always be a need for a full service solution, whether it's asynchronous or synchronous. For those doctors that are willing to actually engage with technology to finish the note, then the self serve, fully automated, you know software, pure software solution would be the one that would cater to them. There will at some point be some cannibalization as you get better and better to, or closer and closer to full automation with the self-serve product. But that is a long time coming for anybody in the industry. So just, just to finish this up. Um, so the, the offering in 23, which doesn't exist yet, but if it's a full software solution 
I assume that means software type margins is, is what you've said in the past. That is correct. Yes. So it would be accretive to our gross margin profile uh, for the whole company. The impact, of course, will depend on the mix of our revenues, uh, how much of the, uh, of the mix goes to go, uh, the self-serve product versus the other products um, that we currently have in our portfolio. Great. Uh, looking forward to <laughs> We are too. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, okay, Bill, go ahead. Yeah. So for you know, for us, there's really two drivers of uh, of margins and, and improving profitability. You know, one is, is in enhancing the use of technology, and so you know anything that you can automate, uh, you know, has to wind up reducing your uh, your cost. Uh, and uh, and the second is the offshore team, because uh, you know for uh, for us. Uh, again, there's you know there's there's a lot of uh, of skilled resources available around the world, uh, and, and we've got them as our employees. They're not subcontractors. They're not working for an outsourcer, uh, and and they cost significantly less than uh, than hiring people here. So you know any 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 work that we can get done that that the doctor would have needed to uh, to hire a uh, a person in their office where we can hire somebody at a tenth the cost and uh, and and do that work. You know that's going to be accretive. Uh, that's going to allow us to uh, to price it competitively for the uh, for the physician uh, and allow us to make a nice margin ourselves. Now, you know, having said that, uh, we we're also as a company at an interesting inflection point because when we went public uh, in 2014 as a as a 10 million dollar company, uh, most of our growth was uh, was coming through acquisition, and and we've done. 17 acquisitions since we've been uh, public, some of them really small, some of them uh, big and transformative. We, we're now a $140 million company. Uh, and people look at that growth and then they, they'll say, well, how much of that growth came from organic? And, and until two years ago, we didn't have any organic sales people. We didn't have sales and marketing efforts at all because we felt we could grow more cost-effectively through, uh, through M&A. And I'd say, Analysts, you know, ranging from Alan, other uh, other sell side analysts, a lot of buy side analysts said, 30% uh, compound growth is wonderful. How, I, I care about the organic portion exclusively. So we've uh, we've dramatically ramped up what we're spending on uh, on sales and marketing. And so when you when you look at our numbers in 2022, you'll start to see sales and marketing growing, and you're going to continue to see that growth in uh, in 2023 and beyond. And from our perspective, we produce nice, healthy net margins. You know, we, we, we're, we've been EBITDA positive for many, many years. We've been gap net income positive for, uh, for over a year, uh, every single quarter. Uh, so you know, our, our, our philosophy is I want to continue to, uh, to plow the, uh, the profits back into increasing uh, sales and marketing. Uh, now that I am not only adding new customers, but adding new offerings to cross-sell existing customers, uh, being able to show that net organic growth is something that we've never really had the luxury of doing in the past, uh, and we'll start to be doing in the future. So, to uh, to us, you know, having really nice, healthy profit margins is good. And when you can do that at the same time that you're showing good organic growth, we think eventually that'll get the market to uh, to to wake up and say, ah, you know, this company. It's 14 times as big as it was at the time of its uh, IPO. Why is the stock price lower? <laughs> Why is the market cap of the common lower? Eventually, someone will ask that question, uh, and 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 we'd like them to uh, to to be able to see the uh, the results and uh, and feel positive about uh, about investing in uh, in us. Great, thank you. So, this is an impressive commentary. I'm going to say, um, in the last quarter, both of your companies have commented. I may not say this exactly right, but that your bookings are pretty much the strongest ever um, from your third quarter earnings calls. Um, explain what's behind that, because uh, uh, with everything we're hearing in the economy and stuff. So uh, uh, if you could both touch on that, we'll, we'll start with Manny. Sure, great question, Alan. So we think we're benefiting from a couple of factors. Um, obviously the secular trend in the industry where um, even though the industry may be as a whole hurting financially, um, the need to improve their efficiency, the industry's efficiency has never been greater. Um, and as a result, it's forcing many organizations to think about 
or rethink how they go about providing care to their customers. And um, they have come to the realization, increasingly so, um, that they should focus on what they do best, which is deliver care and outsource or let other parties take care of the back office, um, like Bill does, Bill's company does uh, with RCM and, and, and other, other parts of the workflow. Uh, we do the same thing with medical documentation. So uh, it doesn't make any sense, economic sense, for a healthcare organization to spend well over $200 an hour for someone to do administrative tasks that they can outsource for $30 an hour or much less. It doesn't make any economic sense to do that. Um, there are companies like ours that focus exclusively on addressing this problem. So we've got technology, we've made investments in technology, in processes, in people, et cetera, to deliver something that is faster, cheaper, better than when they do it themselves. So we're benefiting from that secular trend where the industry itself recognizes the need to use third parties to address the pressure that they're having on uh, improving their operating efficiency. The second benefit is within the competitive landscape of our industry, we are winning. <laughs> we have the broadest product portfolio of anybody out there and we can deploy it in the widest range of care settings, not just the clinical or ambulatory, but also the emergency department. Very few companies are able to straddle both because the workflows are so different. Very complicated to get your technology and your processes to work effectively in both of those settings. We also are in a variety of other settings. So that helps us win. So those two factors, the industry demanding more, so the size of the pie getting bigger, but our share of that pie increasing. And that's why you know, we've guided the street to organic growth uh, long-term ranging anywhere from between 30 and 45%. And we've been at the higher end of that range uh, consistently, and we expect that to be the case going forward. Um, so that's the, that's the rationale behind the bullishness uh, that we represented during our last earnings call when we were talking about our bookings. The reason behind the bookings is, are, are those two factors. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Bill? Yeah, and I, 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 would, uh, I would echo that and say candidly, uh, when the doctors are feeling pain, that's the time when Care Cloud and Augmetics are going to do the best. Because let's face it, if, if our clients could make 35, 40% profit margins easily, you know, finish their, uh, their day at five o'clock, you know, go home. I mean, if life was good, they'd say, why do I need to change? So in some respects, the, uh, you know, the, the impetus for people to, uh, to, to think about doing something differently is they recognize they've got to do it differently. You know, if you're sitting there in a large practice and you can't hire the people in your in your office, eventually you're going to come to one of us and say, "Can you help me with this uh, with this problem?" And 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 so that's kind of the uh, you know the core uh, the core driver. And uh, and again, for uh, you know for us, uh, what makes it what made 2022 our our highest uh, bookings ever is the fact that we've gone from nobody, one or two people in sales and marketing to 55 people worldwide doing sales and marketing. Well, guess what? When I have more people, they're going to they're going to sign more clients. Uh, when you go from I've got a, a, a bundled solution set and, and I'm adding in incremental features, but I'm really not charging extra for those features to saying now I've got some brand new service offerings that I'm going to roll out that are going to allow the doctor to make more money and it's going to be new revenue for me. Well, guess what? Now I'm not only cross-selling to uh, to existing customers, I'm sa I'm signing up new customers. Put those two together, and you see uh, you see impressive uh, organic uh, bookings. And and again, this is something that you know for us, the market has been telling us we needed to do this for years. Uh, it really wasn't until 2020 when we bought CareCloud, who who had an established sales and marketing team that we were able to use as a core to uh, to start expanding. I mean that. We, we've grown it many times from what we inherited, but sometimes you need that uh, that, that healthy core to begin with to uh, to really make it uh, make it work. And so, uh, you know, I think the 
you know, 2023 is going to be an interesting year as, uh, as people look at our numbers because bookings are good. Of course, what does an investor care about? They actually don't care about the bookings. They care about what's the revenue and, and what's the profitability and the cash flow that, uh, that derives from that revenue. And as the, uh, the new customers uh, roll out, as the new services roll out, you know, as you get into the, uh, to the latter half of 2023, you'll start to see the, uh, the revenue and the profitability growing pretty dramatically on an organic basis. And I think uh, once people see that, that's when the light will go off and they'll say, ah, boy, this is really working. Yeah. Today, all they see is the, uh, the bookings. They see the expense uh, of, of the sales and marketing and, 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 and they're like, well, you know, show it to me. So, you know, people are going to have to be patient, but the good news is uh, the, the most important uh, hard work is, is already done really kind of getting the momentum started. That's great. Um, well, I want to thank you both. I mean, you have uh fairly compelling uh, offerings for, for uh, a large need um, in the healthcare market. So um, very impressive to, to hear you guys talk and, uh, and how you've addressed this. So um, thank you both very much. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Uh, have a good day. Thanks, Thanks for including Alan. us today. Good to see you again, Bill. Take care. Bye-bye.